WPSL, the talk of the Treasure Coast. It's time now for Comfort Time Live. Comfort Time Live is a call-in radio show educating you on issues surrounding your home. Don't become a statistic. Listen in and find out how you can protect yourself. Comfort Time Live. Comfort Time Live. And now, here's your host, your personal comfort consultant. Tackling all of your home comfort issues, here he is, Tom Platania. And the crowd goes wild. This is like the best part of my week is when I actually get somebody to applaud me. Actually, it's the best part of the show. Oh, <laughs> oh I thought that's when they were applauding as we were leaving. Oh, I that. thought they were applauding because the, uh, the, the the engineer was doing such a fine job of mixing the music. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, that's <laughs> the ticket. Hey, Tom. <laughs> oh, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another great edition. And it's going to be a great edition tonight of Comfort Time Live. Now, remember... ComfortTimeLive.com. You can actually go there and listen and watch the show. And uh, you're going to want to listen in and watch tonight. We have two incredible guests, probably I mean, say almost probably two of the best guests we've ever had on Comfort Time Live going to be with us today. And I'm very interested in this topic, so it's going to be really good. But you remember, you can always go to ComfortTimeLive.com, watch any of our shows live. You can also watch all of the archived shows, anything that we've ever done. Now, we're, we're going on to the date, almost five years exactly. Wow. And we have over 550 shows that we've done here on Comfort Time Live. You've act, and probably 520 of those, Cliff, you've done with me. Probably. And, and of course, now we're also broadcasting on two stations now this show. Yes. That's this correct. show, this show. Thursday nights is on both WPSL AM 1590, the talk of the Treasure Coast, and WSTU in Stewart Martin County's Heritage Heritage Station. So you got W Comfort. W Fun. Comfort Time Live. Platania Mania. Hey, I like that. (laughs) Where'd you get that idea? Uh, Some brilliant guy who's been in radio, gosh, since before I was born. Yeah, I wish I could be like one of them guys. (laughs) All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, let us get to it. Now, everybody wants to be successful. Yes. I know I want to be successful, and I work extremely hard at it every day. But not everyone is really prepared for it. True. You know, they don't all have the right attitude to gain that success. Yeah. Well, our special guests this evening are Dave Bowman and Doug Hess, which are co-authors of, now, uh, they got to love this, of Gordon Gecko, CEO, Lessons from Wall Street, with a winning attitude. Gotta love Gordon Gecko. You remember Gordon Gecko from the Wall Street movie? Oh, yeah. Yeah, just just absolutely wonderful. So w- without further ado, let's, uh, okay. gentlemen, are you there? We are here. Awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome, gentlemen. Now, hey, uh, real quick, which which one of you guys is the good-looking one? I, I got the pictures of you up on the website right now, so I just want to see who responds. <laughs> Either one of us are really that good looking. <laughs> I, was waiting for, for radio. <laughs> I was waiting for one of you to speak up and so I could say, well, so you're saying that the other guy's not? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so so who do we have? Uh, Doug, which one are you, Doug? I'm right here. Hey, Doug, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great yourself. I'm doing wonderful, and I really appreciate you reaching out and uh, telling me all about what you guys are doing. And I tell you, it really attracted my attention because I'm – you know, everything I do in my life, I, I try to be successful at it. I try to learn something every day. Uh, if I if I don't learn something, I try not to go to bed until I do. And um, I really, when you when you approached me with this, I, I thought it was just a great. If I'm interested, I know my audience is going to be interested in it because uh, uh, around this area, and you know, as you know, people who listen to AM radio are more educated than FM listeners, believe it or not. Is, mm-hmm. I think it's correct with the statistics. Well, and talk radio in particular because we're foreground. We're not background. Music is in the background. You can chat and have lunch while music is playing. But with talk radio, it commands attention Absolutely. the whole time. Now, uh, now their book, Gordon Gecko, CEU, Lessons from Wall Street with a Winning Attitude. Now, how long ago did you gentlemen write the book? Well, the book's been out for uh, a little over two years now. Okay. Uh, and so if we back up a little bit, uh, we were probably in the process of writing the book for about two years from start to finish. Uh, 
from getting the idea and really from kicking it around to really getting serious with the idea to uh, full production to where it's it's out there for uh, your listeners to, to pick up a copy and read, uh, which I, I would say, and I'll let Dave answer this as well, but those were probably the two longest years of my life uh, <laughs> in the process of trying to get this book. I know when we first started, uh, I always tell the story when we go out and uh, we speak on the book that, uh, you know, I thought when I got the call from one of the publishers saying, hey, we're, we're kind of interested in this book, uh, what do you got? And I, I said, well, I don't have a finished uh, manuscript. All I got is about a three to 400-word synopsis. And um, so they said, well, we're interested. We'd like to see at least the first three chapters of your book to decide whether or not we're going to sign a contract with you and move forward with it. So I got really excited, and that was a Friday night, and I was telling my wife, and we went out to dinner ex- celebrate and excited, and then the next day on Saturday, I get my cup of coffee and my notepad. I'm going upstairs to my office to knock out this great book. And it was at 8. I came down at about 11 o'clock, and she asked me if I've got it done. And I was like, no. And she goes, you got the first three chapters done? I go, no. And she goes, well, what have you been doing up there for the last three hours? I said, I think i got about a half a page written. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> oh, It's tough. It's tough, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's- anybody who thinks they are just – filled with ideas to try putting them down on paper and seeing if they can make a book out of it. You'll, you'll realize pretty quickly that those ideas don't stretch as far as we might think they are going to. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of a couple books myself, and it's just, you know, you sit down and, oh, yeah, you may know everything in the world about your subject and topic, but you're, you're correct. Trying to put it down on paper sometimes can be just just nerve-wracking. Now, how did you guys get together? Were you friends before this? Um, did you work on Wall Street together? or, or How did you guys meet? Doug and I were co-workers, um, and actually still are co-workers with the same company. And we traveled together in, in sales, and, uh, and so we spent a lot of time on the road and, and, uh, and me- meeting with clients and um, spending that, kind of, that, that sort of professional time together grew into a, you know, a, a personal friendship. And, uh, and so when we were together, uh, we actually we, we try to do some you – know, we've done some fun things together with our families as well. Great. And we were at a, a, a seminar, a Get Motivated seminar. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, yeah. the name of the seminar here, if you're familiar with it. But there's a lot of famous people who are speaking at these seminars. And we were there together. And, uh, and, and during one of the breaks, and we were both pumped up because of some of the things that the, sh- the speakers had been sharing. And Doug looked over at me and goes, Dave, you know what? I have an idea for a book. And I think we've all been there, you know, where we have an idea for a book. And I'm like, really, what is it? And and Doug has this this uncanny ability of remembering movie quotes. <laughs> and the movie Wall Street is is absolutely one of his favorites. And I think Doug, you would even admit to that. That's and true. he quotes this movie all the time in different you know different scenarios. And so he said, you know how I'm always throwing around these quotes from Wall Street? I said, yeah. He says, I think. I want to write a book on those quotes and just kind of explain what it means to me. And I thought, you know what, that's, to me that seemed like a very marketable idea. I mean, Wall Street was an incredibly famous movie. People can identify yeah, with it. And, uh, and when you take these quotes, whether they're in context or out of context, there was something applicable for everyone. And I said, Doug, I think that's a great idea. You should run with it. And, and that's exactly what he did. And, and as he just mentioned, um, you know, he struggled a little bit with it. And then he, he, he came to me and asked me if I'd be willing to be involved in the project. And, uh, and I said, absolutely, I'd be willing to be involved in that project. And, and, and he gave me what he had, which, like you said, was maybe around, you know, a, a brief synopsis. Right. And, uh, and I, I tried to add to it. And I, I think we, at that point we both realized, oh, this is, this is a little tougher <laughs> than we thought. Oh, it's, we run into those things. But it's, it's great that you guys got this out. And uh, I'm, I'm just waiting to finish it up myself and just really get into this thing. But um, now, I mean, the first the first question is I, I, we talk about it's about seeking personal development that you had mentioned to me, personal and professional achievement. What does Wall Street, obviously the book Lessons from Wall Street with a Winning Attitude, what does that have to do with personal success or professional advancement? For me, I, I think it means something a little different for everybody. Okay. And it really means a couple of different things, or it can, depending on how you want to interpret it. Uh, and to me, both of them come down to the same thing. If you're looking at Wall Street as the movie, or if you're saying Wall Street as the financial district that's in New York with the stock exchange, 
what does that have to do with the winning attitude? And I think everybody can take away something a little different. For me, the movie took away for me is um, having a dream and at times maybe paying a sacrifice. Right. Uh, w- you know, what does that mean? And sometimes that meant being away from my family because we were traveling, as Dave mentioned. Uh, sometimes it meant staying up, missing a ball game, et cetera, making that sacrifice for our families or for the company or whatever uh, an individual can justify in their mind what a sacrifice needs to be made. And so for me, it was just, it really put that carrot out in front of me, uh, made me aggressive, made me a little hungry uh, to be successful. Uh, as Dave said, we're, we're in marketing and sales. We do a lot of traveling. And so a lot of this I felt really applied to the roles that we um, we live. And really that movie just really spoke to me in, in, in a variety of different ways. And if you uh, notice in the, cha- or in the book, each chapter is based off of a quote um, from the movie. Kind of like and every dream has its has a price. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and what what's that sacrifice? I know in the in the book we talk about in chapter one. You know, it, it's asked. You know, if you're a single mother going to school, going back to college to get that degree, and you have children, maybe you're going to miss them at a baseball game or a swimming meet, or you're going to miss a dance recital, and you've got to really have that balance of. You know, what are you going to do? Are, are you going to try to make the sacrifice and, and try to have a better achievement for your family, or are you going to go in and see that dance recital or that baseball game or that swimming meet? Yeah. And, and allow me to interject there, and I, yeah, I, 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 forgive me for interrupting, but I, I wanted to kind of even, even if you allow me to add to that, sure. because I think that from a standpoint of personal success, the book is going to speak to whatever personally drives you, whatever it is that motivates you. And the quotes that we take, in the vast majority of them in the book, the quotes can be looked at from two different perspectives. And also, when you look at the relationship between Gordon Gecko and, and sort of his prodigy Bud, um, you see Bud as being personally driven. You also see Gordon Gecko as being personally driven. So I think we can, you can take what's in the book and say, how does this apply to my personal goals and what right. it is that I want to achieve? But we also see mentorship there. We see Gordon Gecko taking Bud under his wing and teaching him the things that he that that he needs to know or that he wants them to know to be personally successful. Because I don't really think that for most of us we can achieve success solely on our own. I, I really think that often, not always perhaps, but often there are other people involved in that process. Um, that's but as that's Doug, actually the smart that, thing. Whatever to that do. dream is, whatever personally motivates you, typically does come with a price. And as Doug was saying, that price often in a word is really sacrifice and right. and and there's two sides of that coin as doug was talking about um you know things that you're going to have to give up whether it's time with your children if you go back to school so i, I was raised in a in a, a household with a single mother um and, and she she was a high school dropout she was a um she came from a, a, an alcoholic background and she was basically their whole family was drowning in alcoholism and she recognized she did not want to do that to her children. She didn't want to live that life. She wanted to give something better. So she wanted to improve herself. And she knew that if she went back to school and pursued her education, she would be able to you know, to provide a better life for her, for us, for her and, and uh, my brother and I. And so uh, it was, but that, that did come with sacrifices. And that's what Doug was sharing. You know, there was times she had to give away, you know, give up time with us or she wasn't able to go to certain scout meetings and she'd have to get a family member to take us where we needed to be. But there were also times when she said, you know what, this is more important to me than schooling. Um, and, and, and she would spend less time studying and she'd take a lower grade in order to be with us and do the things that were the most important to us. And so that, that sacrifice is a, a coin that has two different sides. And each of us have to decide what is what is it that we're willing to give up in order to achieve yeah, and, that dream. And every and everybody everybody's going to have their their own version of what that is, and that's obviously what individuality is all about. And as you were saying, Doug and and uh, Dave, is, you know everybody's going to take a look at this uh, book, and uh, just like a lot of books, you know we're going to take a look at this book, and everything that we read, we are going to, as you say, we're going to interpret it slightly different because a, a, each one of us has our own experiences and. Based on our own experiences, we're going to interpret what we read. And then the, the key, if you're someone who reads books like this a lot, the key is is finding how in your own life you can take that, interpret it, and, and make it success for you. 
as an individual. Um, and that's what I do with a lot of these books. And I'm, um, sometimes it's difficult figuring out how to do that, though. <laughs> it, 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 it is. It's difficult. But, you know, that's where you sometimes reading a book, you know, two or three times, it, you know, really helps you the first time you go through, you read it. And then you, you put it down, you reread it again, and, you know, maybe you do some highlighting. And then you really sit there and focus on the individual things. Um, so uh, a- excellent stuff. I, I think that makes a lot of sense. We're going to go ahead and take our first break here, gentlemen. And uh, you are listening to Doug Hess and David Bowman, co-authors of Gordon Gecko CEO, Lessons from Wall Street with a Winning Attitude. This is Comfort Time Live. I'm Tom Platania. We'll be right back. Electric specializes in all of your electrical needs, from security lighting to search protection and everything in between. How do you think they got their name? Elite Electric. Elite Electric has been family owned and operated on the Treasure Coast since 1988, and they're recommended by Comfort Time Live. Visit online at EliteElectricAndAir.com and learn more about their services. Elite Electric, service today. Proud sponsor of Comfort Time Live every Thursday evening at 6.05 on WPSL. 1590. The average person moves five times in their lifetime. If it's moving time for you, Tom Platani is ready to sell your home quickly and professionally. Tom's unique promotional plan includes real estate magazines, online listing sites, print advertising in your local paper, and exposure to thousands of people on his popular home improvement talk radio show, Comfort Time Live. Call 882-5700 to get your house on the market and featured on Tom's websites. Details about your home will reach thousands of interested buyers, but don't delay. Call Tom Platania today, 772-882-5700. You're listening to WSTU Stewart. This is WPSL Fort St. Lucie. And you're listening to Comfort Time Live. Once again, here's your host, the one and only, Tom Platania. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. How could you go wrong with an introduction like that, huh? That's right. (laughs) Well, you need a little backup. A little backup. A little confidence. Speaking of backup, you know, let's jump right in. We're with Doug Hess and David Bowman um, from uh, the... Uh, wrote the uh, co-authored the book Gordon Gecko, CEO Lessons from Wall Street with a Winning Attitude, and uh, you know we're talking about support. You know, you mentioned a, l- a little earlier. I think it was you, Dave, that talked about uh, individual success and uh, how others play a role in that. And you know, I really and I, I agree with you. I, I really think it's extremely difficult, and I think anybody would be crazy to really try to become successful without the support of others. Uh, do you think it's necessary to include others? Well, you, you know, I, yeah, we think it's important. I, I'm not sure if it's exactly necessary because I do think some people work better, you know, on their own. But I think it's important to have people uh, included in whatever your project or endeavor is. It kind of comes down to more heads being better than, than one. Uh, and I also think that really – most people want to see other people succeed, and they're going to help you get to your goal. Right. Uh, whether it's going to be just motivation or, or information that they can share with you, uh, much like with Doug. I mean, he had the idea for the book, but, and, and then I kind of motivated him to get started and when, he, when he struggled. And when we both struggled, because when he struggled, I, I encouraged him. I said, let me be exactly. a part of this. When I struggled or I was having trouble finding time, he encouraged me, held me accountable. So I think when you have people who are there to – that you can count on, but at the same time hold you accountable. They can be instrumental and crucial to your success. They're also going to rejoice with you when you do succeed. Um, and, and you know what? A lot of people out there are very distrustful, and uh, and they don't trust other people, and they believe and no one. I'm not going to share my my goal. I'm not going to share, right. you know, what it is I'm planning to do because maybe they'll steal it from me, or maybe they won't. Maybe they just want to see me. You know, right, but fail. that's what you see on TV all the time. I mean, you watch the news, you watch any of the CNBC scoundrels, you know, uh, greed, and you, you see it's because they see so many other people have been been hurt and and, and 
taken advantage of. Yeah. Uh, our walls well, I, are up. But I think that's a Hollywood version of what people are like, and I don't really think that that's what the vast majority of people are like. For example, if you, I mean, maybe this is not a really good example, but I think it is. If, if you were to watch an episode of, like, The Price is Right, or really any, you know, any game show where, um, where, where you focus on an individual contestant, we all have a tendency to root for those contestants. We want to see them win. Right. And when they do, we're happy for them. We like to see them jump around and get crazy. We like to see them smile. And, and, and we want that for ourselves, and we're happy to see when other people have that same type of success. And we're likely to do the same thing. So I think, I think it is crucial to have other people involved. Yeah, I agree. Doug, what, what are your thoughts? No, I, I agree with Dave, uh, but I also agree with you, Tom, that uh, in a lot of cases that, um, you know, we are based on what we see on society. I mean, we have a lot of uh, parents that are um, single parents or parents that are struggling to uh, make ends meet. And so kids go home and sometimes they, they see what's on TV and, and so on and so forth. So a lot of times we become uh, a product of our society. And so... I think it's really important, like Dave said, is to get out and get good role models, somebody that you can look up to, um, and just not kids, but all of us, uh, to get out there and get good role models, somebody that, uh, that like Dave said, is going to hold us accountable and kind of hold our feet to the fire right. uh, and make us a little bit better uh, individual. Yeah, you know, and, and myself, you know, I do. I work really well by myself, but, you know, it is great having that support there because every once in a while you need that little swift kick. Well, and, and, Tom, do you mind if I give an example? Oh, absolutely not. I, I mentioned earlier that Doug and I traveled together. And, and so we were actually visiting a client at one point, And we had a good conversation. We spent probably, I don't know, 30 to 45 minutes with them, making sure that everything was working exactly the way they needed, made sure that they were happy with the services and, and the products that our company was providing. And at the end of that conversation, as we were leaving, we asked them if they, what else they needed from us. Was there anything they needed? Now, in our industry, it was not uncommon for us to go ahead and provide supplies often to in, in small things like pens and, and, and post-its and tablets that the uh, offices could use to, to, for their daily work. Are you allowed Normally, to tell me what kind, of, what kind of marketing you guys do? I'm sorry? Are you allowed to tell me what kind of marketing you guys do? Uh, um, we're in the student loan industry. Oh, okay. All right. So, so we were we were talking to this particular office, and and we normally keep those kinds of supplies in the car. Right. But it, as it turns out, we had just sort of exhausted those supplies. We didn't have any, and we knew that we were going to be on the road for most of that week. And so, before we could get back to the offices and ship something out to out to that client, several days were going to pass. So, what we did when we got back to the car, we called some people back in the at, in our in our home office. And we said, we need you to send some supplies to this, to this, um, off of this school. I'll just say that because we're working with school. Right. And so we want you to send some supplies out to the school. And we asked the people who would be sending the, ply, the supplies to go get a card, uh, a little note card. And we told them what we wanted them to write on the note card. And then we asked them to go find uh, two gentlemen in the hall, so at least it would have more of a, a man's handwriting. Right. Sign our names and send it off to them. That's thinking did. outside the box. It's outside, and, we, and what happened is they overnighted that to the client. The client called us the next day amazed at what we were able to do and said, how did you guys do this? Because you told me that you were going to be on the road for several <laughs> days. I wasn't expecting this until next week. That's it. So when we were thinking outside the box, when we asked other people to get involved and help us in, in focusing on the success of this client and this client's happiness, everyone wa was a winner there. And we were able to go back to the office and say, do you guys know that what you did spoke very highly of not just us, and we appreciate it, but you and the level of service that our company gives to all of our clients? It, it worked out really, really well, and it was because we got other people involved. Now, that may be a, a simplistic example, but that's how people help other people, yeah. even in their daily lives. Yeah, and that's we should have more of that because I tell you that the, the number one thing I see in society, it, it, and you'd think that it would get better, but customer service, what you guys did there, you don't see that. I mean, that's just it's almost non-existent in a lot of places anymore. You know, it, it, it seems like we've di especially with the texting and everything on the web, it's we've distanced ourselves more and more from the clients, and I think that that is absolutely incredible that you uh, guys did that. Now, and we would say the right attitude, and this would, would be sort of the, the gen, you know, sort of the um, uh, uh, the crux of the book, right. is that you want to try to exceed the expectations of yes. of anyone, 
client or otherwise, if you can exceed their expectations, you will be successful. Oh, I do that in my dating life. I set the bar very, very low, so I only got one way to go from there, and that's up. So that's Here we go. <laughs> That's the hey. That's the best way because you always look so much better on the second date. You know, absolutely. <laughs> that's that's of course. My wife. That's of course if you didn't set the bar so low, you don't make it to the second date. Yeah. <laughs> of course, it's, 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 a, it's a tough balance, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Of course, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. <laughs> yeah. that's true. Well, then I just say to myself, well, she probably didn't have a good enough sense of humor. So, oh well, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so now. Obviously, I love the movie, and, and one of the quotes in the movie, uh, the big thing, it, it, you have a chapter in your book called Money Never Sleeps, and I, I just completely agree with that. And I've, you know, I think about four, it's about four, a little over four years, four or five years ago, I actually read a book, and the book, um, the book completely changed my whole attitude on business and life, and let your money work for you and not work for your money. But, you know, one of the quotes, you talked about the quotes from the movie. The main thing about money, bud, is that it makes you do things you don't want to do. And, boy, that is so true. <laughs> that is so true. Now, uh, why did you use that, and to, what does it mean to you? You said everybody's going to have a different uh, thought process. What's it mean to you, Doug? Uh, that particular quote, I, I, I think a lot of times, you know, we, we all agree that money will change us. Uh, it seems like uh, when we have a little bit of success, sometimes it'll go to our head. Uh, maybe we'll get a little bit of a bump in salary, or maybe we'll get a bonus. And the first thing we want to do is go out and spend it uh, because it's an emotional reaction. Right. Something that we talk about, and and it's also in the uh, in the movie. Gordon Gecko talks about this a lot. He tells Bud Fox, he says, "Bud, don't get emotional." Try to separate yourself from that emotional aspect. I know that uh, they'll tell you that um, if a loved one passes in your family and maybe you'll get an, uh, an insurance policy from them, they tell you to set that aside for six months because your emotions, um, excuse me, your emotions will get the best of you and maybe you'll make irrational decisions. Yep. And I, I know for us and our family, my wife and I, we try to do that. We try to, if we get a little extra money or a bonus or whatever, we try to set that aside, and we try not to spend it for two months, three months, whatever, so we can make sure that we get clear priorities in our lives, uh, making sure what we want to do and it's going to be spent in the, in the right way. Right. And uh, otherwise, our emotions run us. Yeah, and, and I think we're all guilty of that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm guilty as, as much as the next person. Oh, uh, but we try to... Uh, Keep our emotions in, in check, and sometimes that's easier said than done. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, you, you, you agree. Money, money can really make. I mean, God, it can make you do crazy things, like even think you can start your own radio show and be successful. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and then right one day, book. five years later, you end up getting two very, uh, very popular guys on there that write a book about money. So it's a, it's a great thing. It only took me five years to get you guys on. Where were you? <laughs> yeah. We were writing. You were writing book. the book. You were writing the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, didn't, I didn't want you then. <laughs> Do you mind if I, I share a little bit too? Because I think that that, that quote is an interesting one, and and it kind of it, it's really kind of depends on your attitude toward money. Because some people believe that there's an evil force behind money that seeks to control us, and, and that's the kind of attitude that says the love of money is the root of all evil. So if you have that attitude toward money, then the interpretation of that quote, the main thing about money is it makes you do things you don't want to do. Right. It's going to be negative. It's going to you're going to say, oh well, that means that money makes you do bad things. And that's true because some people do bad things. I mean, look, we were just talking about the news, and you watch 2020, and there are people who kill and they lie and they cheat and do all kinds of evil things because they want money, and, and, and that's, a, that's a bad thing. But there are some people who have more money than they could ever spend in their lifetime, and they use that money as a tool to do good things for other people. Yes. So if you have that kind of attitude, that, that money is a tool to be used for good, then your interpretation of that quote, the main thing about money is it makes you do things you don't want to do, is going to be a little less sinister. You might interpret it as the fact that, that money, correct, or at least yeah. the desire for it, makes you do things that you would otherwise feel are really just too hard or not worth doing if it weren't for the benefit of money. Meaning, you know, I mean, look at the world we live in today. How many people live off the government dole, and they don't really uh. want to get up and do the hard work that they <laughs> that, need to that's do? A, that's I, a whole other show on that one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So what, 
when we wrote that chapter, Money Never Sleeps, it really, I mean, again, you could replace money with anything that motivates you. Now, we know money makes the world go round, and, right. and, and people, we need money to survive. So we used money because that's where the quote came from. But you could theoretically replace money with anything that motivates you, and we would actually argue that money should not be your sole ma- motivator. In fact, helping others or somehow finding a way to make the world a better place you know, even if it's using your money to do that is a good thing. But the chapter, Money Never Sleeps, is not really so much about money as it is about hard work. And, and that is true. And it, it, you it, you bring up a point. There are there's so many people that I come across. I, I have four businesses and all wow. of those businesses together. And I see people every day and I, you know, that it just have no clue. And they, they, they take as much as they can and work as little as they can. And I just, you know, I guess it's maybe how it's you were, how you were raised. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's your environment, but I know a lot of people like that, and it just it saddens me. But you are 100 percent correct. It's, yeah. You, you know, know, and if we can motivate people to somehow develop a stronger work ethic, then then we've done something good. And 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 this and it sounds like sounds like that would be a good chapter for somebody like that to read. Um, now the the next thing is kind of kind of re- this revolves the next uh, chapter. That you have, you have a title, and it actually kind of revolves around one of the reasons that I started this show is the uh, the most valuable commodity is information, um, and I I couldn't agree with you anymore. But in your eyes, what what makes information so valuable? This is Doug's chapter for sure. He <laughs> should dominate. Go, ahead. Go for it, Doug. Well, you know. Uh, Dave's right. That that was something that I was really strong about when we were kicking around different ideas and things that we wanted to, to make sure that we put in there. And there's a scene in there where uh, Gordon Gecko is talking to Bud Fox, and he basically Bud Fox brings Gordon some insider uh, information, and that's what thrives or drives Gordon Gecko. And 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 when that stops, he keeps saying, "Well, once the information stops, you're you're basically of no value to me," uh, and is getting ready to cut him loose or he says you can stay but you're going to have to you know start bringing me some additional information right and and I, to me in, in the business that, that that Dave and I are in or just in life in general information is so valuable I, I do a little um, adjunct teaching on the side and something that I really stress a lot of my <laughs> students from time to time is you know you, you've got to learn so much here it's, whether it's in the textbook or in your work, et cetera, but there's a, another world going out on outside and around you that you've got to be aware of. Right. And just because it's, you didn't come across it doesn't mean it didn't happen or it doesn't mean it's being affected by you, et cetera. And so it's something that um, you, you just can't stop doing it is constantly grabbing the information, and that's whether you're reading or you're talking to somebody shaking hands, pressing the flesh, getting out there, and really networking. Um, and, and to me, that's that's more valuable than, than any precious metal is information. Yeah, and, you know, and you guys are in, in, the, in the business of, you know, you'll prob- you probably find, and I know I do in, in all of my businesses, uh, an informed client is a great client. The more I can provide information to my clients, to people that I work with, it seems so much better, the relationship, not only with uh, – uh, employees that I have or with clients um, and that's one of the reasons that we did the show is I there's a lot of uninformed and misinformed people out there and you know we say you know knowledge is power well knowledge isn't that much power information is not that power but it's what you do with the information and knowledge that you get that is powerful and so I think that now uh, Dave what that's that's Doug's chapter well what's your what's your input on that as far as uh, information and and, and, and what I, well I, I do think that information is an important part of, of what we do uh, on a daily basis I mean uh, you know the, the more knowledge we have knowledge is power you had just said that uh, when it comes to training our children I mean we should seek uh, my wife and I were foster parents for uh, medically fragile infants um, and, and in order for us to maintain our foster parent license, we had to go through uh, any any type of uh, parental training, uh, you know, uh, physical, 
CPR classes and things right. like that that would be beneficial for a child. Uh, marriage enrichment, because the stronger the stronger your marriage is, the better it is for for children. And so what, what we would and what we started out doing this simply because we wanted to be able to um, you know to keep our foster parent license. Right. But what we found is the more information that we would gather through the different training classes that we were taking in order to keep our licenses, we thought, wow, there's some really, really good information in here. Um, something that, that I'll share with you briefly, we were, uh, we were in one class where the instructor, it was probably not even the best class that we'd ever taken. In fact, the, the best class that we took, I'll put a plug out there for me, forgive me, it was called Growing Kids God's Way. Uh, and we took that multiple times, partly because it had a lot of hours, but it had just a whole lot of really good information. This was not that class, but the instructor said something that was very profound to us that, if, as parents, we didn't take into consideration. It was, don't tell your kids what not to do. Tell them what you want them to do. It's, it's, it's like saying, don't think of pink elephants. When I say that, what's the first thing that comes to your pink mind? Pink elephants, yeah. Pink elephants. So what we, we realized, we thought, well, that's, that's good advice. I mean, that's good information is really what it comes down to. And so the next time we were, we were actually eating um, – eating dinner with our son, and he was uh, uh, maybe two, if that. He was kicking his high chair, and, and instead of saying, you know, don't kick your high chair, what we said was, keep your feet still, and it worked. It, we both looked at each other amazed, and that was information that helped us grow as individuals, grow as parents, um, and so when you have access to information, when you can hold on to that information, and then when you can share it with others, you help those people grow. You mentioned your employees, Tom. I bet when your employees can come back and share information with you that makes your show better, ideas and thoughts, something that they have read, a book that they've read, that actually goes back to sort of the mentorship we've talked about. When you have access to information that makes you stronger, and then you share it with other people, it makes them stronger. Yep, exactly. And I, and I love, uh, and that's one of the things about the show, I love, I'm always learning. And, you know, sometimes not all the topics have to do with the show. When I started the show, well, gosh, we started talking about air conditioning five years ago. And we've grown it to home and lifestyle improvement because I, I've grown my knowledge base and decided that, well, the show is about sharing my knowledge and the information I have. And we've actually, we've helped thousands of people over the past five years um, really guide them in the right direction. And, um, yeah, this, this is a book that is really going to hit home with me uh, when, I, when I go through it. Now, before we get too much further, let's, uh, let's let our listeners know um, where they can get a copy of the book. Um, and Doug or Dave, which one of you gentlemen well, have? Why don't you go ahead and share that information? Well, they can go out to uh, several different places. Uh, it's uh, Barnes & Noble's, Books A Million. Uh, but what <laughs> we have been really telling uh, listeners and uh, people that we speak to is that they can also pick up a copy at Amazon.com. Matter of fact, uh, Dave and I have uh, both agreed that um, it's probably just as easy for people to go ahead and, and pick it up at Amazon. It's perhaps just a little cheaper. Right. Uh, I know prices have already been set and our, our royalties have already been set, so it really doesn't matter, you know, where somebody picks it up. So we've been really encouraging Amazon for a lot of people just because of the the price, and uh, we're not here to, to gouge and and uh, and make people have to pay any more than they they need to or have to. So. Uh, Strongly encourage them to check out Amazon. Yeah, excellent. Now that's actually where I went and, and was looking at the book and kind of glancing through it. And uh, I, I was just so extremely busy trying to have a chance to read the book and everything else that uh, I, I, I'm going to get to it though because I, I figured out, let me talk to you guys first so I get a really good feel uh, about this book and, and everything you're telling me is it's I mean it's key. I mean I've you know I'm a big uh, anything motivational anything that can help me. I mean I. Uh, out of the t dropped out of tenth grade, got my GED in the military, went to college on my own. I, everything I know and everything I've ever done is all self-taught. Um, but but none of it, as you say in the book, none of it without the help uh, of bringing other people in, like yourselves and other folks, to help educate me and grow. That's one thing about the show. If I could bring on people like you that could help educate me in the process, but also educate the listeners, man, I'm one step ahead of the game. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Joe, well, we're going to go ahead and take another quick break. Hold on just a second. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Cover Time Live. We're here with Doug Hess and David Bowman, co-authors of Gordon Gecko, CEO, Lessons from Wall Street with a Winning Attitude. You can get that book at Amazon.com. Very easy to find. Just type in Gordon Gecko, CEO, and it'll already start popping up there for you. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about their book and, well, 
How about how it could help you in your personal life? Did the housing market catch you off guard? Did your home lose value for no apparent reason? Don't let that happen again. Call Tom Platine with Keller Williams Realty now, 882-5700, where the first 25 people will get a free home value package worth $400 to keep you ahead of the market. The market's on the rise, but can change at any minute. Did you try and sell your home and just couldn't get the value you deserved? Give Tom Platania a call, 882-5700, where the first 25 people get a free home value package worth $400 and see how you can get back into the market and get the value you deserve. That's 882-5700 for your free home value value package known for helping you keep that spark now they'll help you keep cool elite electric and air the official air conditioning sponsor of comfort time live has provided the best in heating and cooling customer service since 1988 if your electric bill is costing you more than 12 cents per square foot under air you may be overpaying the utility company elite electric and air can help put that cash back in your pocket Call Elite Electric and Air with 24-hour service. Dial 340-3797. That's 340-3797. The average person moves five times in their lifetime. If it's moving time for you, Tom Platani is ready to sell your home quickly and professionally. Tom's unique promotional plan includes real estate magazines, online listing sites, print advertising in your local paper, and exposure to thousands of people on his popular home improvement talk radio show, Comfort Time Live. Call 882-5700 to get your house on the market and featured on Tom's websites. Details about your home will reach thousands of interested buyers, but don't delay. Call Tom Platania today. 772-882-5700. This is WSTU Stewart, Martin County's Heritage Station, and this is also WPSL Port St. Louis, and the talk of the Treasure Coast. And some of that talk has a lot to do with your comfort. You're listening to Comfort Time Live. Once again, here's your host, Tom Platania. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and hopefully... You've uh, you got a nice little beverage refresh sitting next to you, getting ready to finish listening to the uh, great chapter here on the show. You're listening to Comfort Time Live. We're here with Doug Hess and David Bowman with the book Gordon Gecko CEO, Lessons from Wall Street with a Winning Attitude. Now, I know anybody who's watched either of the Wall Streets. Now, the, the one you're speaking of, Doug, with Bud, that's the newer one, right? No, it was actually the first one. That was the first one. Who was the guy in the second one? What was his uh, name? Or they... was, well, Brett right. Fox actually does a, a cameo appearance right. in, uh, in the second one. Uh, but you're thinking of uh, Shai. Uh, Le Shai Labou. Yeah. I forget what his you. name was, though. But Okay, so so this is the first one. And, and right. it, obviously, anybody who knows the name Gordon Gecko, anybody who's seen the movie, they know that everything about him was just based on Greek. So right, yes. uh, so we know that there has to be something in the book uh, on greed. And I th- what chapter is that? Chapter 8. Chapter eight. 8. Greed is good. Well, possibly. <laughs> 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 I guess, once again, I guess it's all a perception on greed. Some, I guess some people could carry it the wrong way. But uh, how do you justify that in today's environment? Well, I'm going to let Dave uh, answer this one. This is kind of his his uh, chapter, if you will. And, oh, uh, Dave's I'm, good with greed. Yeah, D- Dave's very greedy. No, I'm very greedy. <laughs> so very greedy. You know very what we greedy. we should have had we should have had the wives on the other lines so that we could really hear the truth about what's going on here. <laughs> well, um, I'm glad you did. <laughs> let me share this. The book itself is is really almost antithetical to what Gordon Gecko was preaching in that first movie. Right. Um, it, it, it is absolutely a book on capitalism. It is absolutely absolutely a book on personal success, and the fact that you can achieve your greatest dream if you would just develop the right attitude—an attitude of of willing to make the sacrifices and work hard and do the things that a lot of people in today's society are not really worth doing. One of the greatest. Uh, in, in one of the reviews, somebody said that every high school and college graduate should read this book before they enter the workforce. That was that was a great, great um, uh, review for us. It, it really spoke to what we were trying to do. But in the in the chapter that says greed is good, what what we mean by that, and let's actually let's kind of take it from a negative perspective. If you are the kind of person who, let's say, you're, if you're you're selfish, you want all of the money in the world, and somehow you've managed to achieve dreams beyond what you can begin to imagine and you're worth 
m- millions and millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars. You're a person on Shark Tank who created a business and you sold it, and, and now you're worth hundreds of millions, if not over a billion dollars. Now, there's two things that you can do with that money, or three, really, when you take it. You can, you can do good things with that money. But if you're a selfish person, you're either going to keep it in the bank and you're going to look at a giant number at a statement at the end of the month, and, and, and you're going to do nothing with it while you're alive. But upon your demise, that money, your greed, is either going to be left to benefit somebody else, somebody hopefully that you've loved in your family that will, that will improve their lives. But even if you had no one in, in your life and that money went back to the state, I would argue that the state would then use that money to make improvements, build roads, roads and bridges and the things we hear Often our government talks really about which half that? the money is not used for those things. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, I was going to say, do you, you really uh, believe that that's what you're going to use it for? <laughs> it arguably be used for the betterment of those people in society. Right. So your greed has served to help others even if you did nothing with it. But even if you decided, I want to do, I want to have all the toys. I want to I, I, I live on from coast to coast. I want to I want to. A house in New York, I want a house in San Diego, I want a house in South Florida, I want boats, I want a plane to go back and forth to all of those places, I want the fanciest sports cars, I'm going to keep two or three of them in each place, I'm going to eat at the finest restaurants, I'm going to date the the most attractive women or men if you're a woman, whatever the case might be, I'm going to find a trophy wife, whatever it is that you want. If you're going to live high on the hog and achieve success beyond what you could ever really imagine, and you buy all of those toys that you're doing just for yourself and, and, and possibly to let your closest friends enjoy it as well. Well, you can't be in all three of those places at the same time. So when you're new, in New York, your home in San Diego and your home in Florida are, are, are left unguarded, arguably. Um, and, and so you're going to need somebody. You're going to need a security system there. You're going to need people to provide upkeep for those homes. You're going to probably need somebody to clean them. If you have that much money, you're going to need somebody who keeps track of your finances and writes your bills. You need a mechanic to take care of those sports cars, a marina and a mechanic to take care of your boat. You need a, a pilot, unless you have your own pilot's license, and you're probably going to need a mechanic to take care of that. You're going to need a place to keep that, that plane. All of those things even if you're doing it just for your own selfish desires, provide a, a job or income for somebody who's providing a service to you. That, I, that, is, that is a unique perspective, and, and that is, I like that, though. I mean, that makes That's a how lot of seed sense. is good because we cannot help, and this thought just jumped into my head, and I know we're running out of time, but, but we cannot help but do good for others and often build assets for ourselves even when we're trying to be as selfish as we can. Back in the 80s, there was a movie called Brewster's Millions. Did you see it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Do you remember the goal was spend $3 million in exchange for something of a higher amount, $30 yep. million or $100 yeah. million or whatever uh-huh. it was. I don't quite remember it. And what he kept trying to do was spend the money so that he didn't have any assets in exchange for a much larger amount than he was actually spending. Yep. So the concept is similar. You generate a ton of wealth for yourself, and then you take advantage of that wealth by, by doing only good things for yourself, but sub- subsequently, or perhaps consequently, by doing good things for yourself, you also do good things for others, even if it's just impl- you know, by, um, by, by employing others, yeah. whether they're employed by you or employed by a company that you hire for service. So that's what we mean by greed is good, is that greed is good for society. Um, greed, and it doesn't have to be greed for money. It, it, it can be it can be greed for the the best life, or greed for as right. much time as you can get with your kid. Um, it, it, again, we can take that that quote out of context, but what we're saying is that when you are motivated to make yourself as best the best that you can be, and even if that means having as much as you can possibly uh, possibly obtain, you will subsequently, or or perhaps the word might be consequently, still positively affect other people in that process I, I tell you it's it's a you know it's amazing how just anything in general can be looked at from a, a positive or a negative approach and i really now that you say that it's kind of like duh yeah it makes a lot of sense that never thought of greed in that 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 way but that makes a lot of sense that even though it's an individual that he's still going to end up whether he likes it or not in some way shape or form helping other people in the meantime 
Well, it, it, and really what it comes down to, and this is what's interesting, the book, you know, Gordon Gecko, CEO, Lessons from Wall Street for a Winning Attitude, it's really about attitude. Yeah. And, and, it, and, and if we can maintain a positive attitude and look at everything as much as we possibly can with, with an attitude that focuses on the positive side of what it is, we're happier, and then we'll make other people happier. Ah, awesome. Well, gentlemen, I want to tell you I really appreciate it. I got the picture of your book up on the screen, so uh, when this gets downloaded to YouTube, folks will be able to uh, see the book so they'll know that they have the right book when they go to Amazon.com and uh, pull that up. Gordon Gecko, CEO, CEO excuse me, uh, Lessons from Wall Street with a Winning Attitude. And, gentlemen, I tell you, I really appreciate the opportunity to have you on the show. Uh, you really – you, you've really changed my mind, uh, my thought process on a couple different things, um, and uh, that's great. That means I learned something. That means now I can go home and drink and go to sleep <laughs> because I can't, you know, I, some, some nights I can't go to sleep. I can keep drinking, but I can't go to sleep until I learn something, and now I'll, I'll have to make it a short night. <laughs> well, we appreciate your time, and, and this has been beneficial for us, and we, awesome. we, we thank you so much. And, awesome. and if we've helped other people you know, look at their, ad, their own attitude a little differently and sure. perhaps hopefully better, then, then, then this has been a success, and we appreciate right. that. Well, you gentlemen can go to ComfortTimeLive.com, and you'll actually be able to listen to the entire show and actually see the pictures of yourself up there, the pictures of your book, and uh, archived, and then it will also be archived uh, on the, my YouTube uh, page. So ComfortTimeLive.com. And you guys can actually go there and download that afterwards and then upload it to your uh, your own website. So uh, do, do whatever you want with it and uh, help, you know, maybe blast it out there. It will be on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Spreaker. It's, it's going to be on Blog Talk Radio next week. Um, so you guys are going to be plastered all over the place and hopefully uh, – Hopefully get some good success in, in showing people out there that this is a great read. So thank you again, gentlemen. You guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Tom. You too. Congratulations right. on your five years. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. thank you very much. All right, so the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen, we have our quote. And what's our quote? Building a better you is the first step in building a better America. That's from Zig Ziglar. All right. It starts with you, Cliff. I've got my own motivational saying for you. What's that? It takes one to know one. <laughs> <laughs> no, you aren't, but what am I? No, you aren't, but what am I? <laughs> All right. Have a great evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening to Comfort Time Live. And next week, we got... Gus Lopez from the South uh, South California Builders Association. This is WSTU Stewart. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie. This has been Comfort Time Live. The time right now is 7 o'clock. Military commanders keep.